Hey everyone, making this video on how to structure your resume just because I've been getting a lot of questions on people who just res wanted me to review their resume, wanted to see like what a good resume looks like or how to structure a resume if they've never built a resume before. I'll show you exactly how I did mine and how I like this is pretty much the structure that I use to land like all my pretty much my internships, my new grad offers and and also my senior offer. I use the same template, but this is kind of what my resume looks and I'll break down each of the sections. But first, let, let's just like walk through it top to bottom. I anonymized a little bit of it ju ju just because just just so um, you could just basically don't have to worry about where I worked or what I done exactly just more we're just mostly focused on structure but i did leave a lot of the content the same honestly i just like anonymized some of the jobs so okay this is how i start my resume i start from the very top i just have my name i have my phone number i have my email then i have like links to my github and my linkedin you can literally click on these and it'll like recruiters will take you like right to somebody's LinkedIn. So th that's like the very top portion right here is, maybe I'll just do it on Excalibur. draw. The first, oops, the, the very first portion is going to be, or let me use black ink here, um, like contact information. Let me reduce this. So I, I usually start it with contact information. Most resumes I've seen also start with just contact information there. Another thing that I like to have personally above is just the languages and technologies that I'm used that I'm used to working with. That allows recruiters or engineer managers to quickly look at all the languages and technologies that I know and see that if it's gonna be in the match for that role. Um, this helps a lot I, I feel like a lot of different recruiters have told me to add like a languages and technology section. So I just add this and I think it also helps with like um, the AI stuff. I know they run AIs to like match people to jobs. So sometimes it helps like match the keywords. Um, maybe that's just a theory, but I'm pretty sure it helps. So yeah, I have a languages and technologies at the, at the top. So you said languages and tech. So this is kind of just a list of all the languages and technologies that I know. And that just like helps them figure out like who is this person? What do they know? And then since I'm a more experienced grad or since I already have work experience, I put that second. So, or I put that as like the, the, fir the first section here. So I have my work experience here and I do it in reverse chronological, I guess, where my most recent experience is at the top. So you could see that I say what company I worked at over here. Let's go to green. I, I say what company I worked at, what my, what like my position was. And then I also say how long I've been working there. And then I have some bullet points describing like what I did at that specific company. And honestly, for a lot of these companies, I have bullet points. I have like way more bullet points than these, but I just, depending on where I, I'm gonna apply, I like swap in and out bullet points so that it can match what they're looking for in the job description. So that's how I do a little bit of tailoring. Um, you could even use software for a lot of that. There's a there's there's a different software that allows you to like define a lot of different bullet points for a different job and let you swap in it out easy and generate a PDF. So I pretty much have my work experience here. Let's go like this. Um, let's say. So I talk about my work experience. I talk about like for each job I say. I do it reverse chronological. I have different bullet points and I'll dive deep into how to structure the bullet points first. I mean, later after I talk about the structure here, but so we have our contact, we have our languages technology. Now they know exactly what I've did for work here. And then 
after that, I have my project section. So I really have a bias here for like showing what are the real things that I built as a software engineer. So let's say here, I just throw my projects there. And then this is kind of like more needed for new grads. So I, I, maybe I'll remove this at some point, but these are like leadership and awards things that I've done. I feel like as you gain more experience, they more they more just care about like what you've done as an engineer. And but sometimes that helps, honestly. So these are some leaderships and awards that that I pretty much had these when I was doing new grad applications. So it's still there. So we have our work experience, our projects, and our leadership and awards. And then finally we have our education. So And then, yeah, that's kind of how I structured it because because I'm a like experienced engineer, like I've already worked in the industry. So I have work experience here. But honestly, when, when I was a new grad, I structured it more like this. When I was a new grad, I structured it. Um, let me grab it. Yeah, when I was a new grad, I structured it more like I took my education. I took the work experience because I didn't really have any to the bottom. I put my education up here like this. I took, so I talk about what, what I did in school kind of, or that I'm in school. Then I put my projects. Then I put sort of like some leadership and awards thing. Then I put my work experience. So like if you only work like retail jobs or things not specific, that kind of helps there. But they mostly care about like what education you did, some of the projects that you've worked on, some of like the leadership and awards things you've been doing, like um, have you been like joining clubs and things like that. So that gives them, cause you, most recruiters are gonna read top to bottom. So you want to structure it so they see what they wanna see first. If they don't really care about your experience at things that aren't related, like if you worked at a clothing store, which was my case, um, it's still important to add in your resume, but probably you want to highlight my education and projects first because those are more relevant to the job that I'm applying for. So that's how, kind of how I would structure that. I would, kind of, I would just rearrange this if I'm a new grad. But since I'm an experienced grad, we pretty much just get straight into um, my work experience and then my projects as well. So yeah, that's kind of how it is. Um, let's just like talk about how, or like let's just dive deeper into how I even structure these bullet points. So you could see, what the advice that I would give is make your, try if possible, because sometimes this gets weird, Try to make bullet points results oriented. So here, um, so you instead of saying like, oh, I did, the, instead of just like, because an, a way to do it is you could just talk about your roles and responsibilities. So let's go on like open AI careers. So one way to do this is, where is it? Let's just look at software engineering, back end, front end. So you can be like full stack software engineering, right? You could just start listing out some of these like roles and responsibilities that are in the resume. Like talk about like, oh, I owned the end to end development life cycle for a new platform. I collaborated closely with engineers. I worked with the product. So you could, what you don't want is your resume to basically look like a job description or basically look like, I don't know what this is called, like whatever you're applying for, like the roles and responsibilities of a job. You don't want to just list that out. You want to list out things that you achieved in your company that, that like are more concrete and then shows that you 
are able to get that role in, or able to do that role and responsibility. So let's, let's be example. So instead of saying like I owned the end to end development life cycle for a new platform, here I said, I designed and built our public API from zero to one that can deliver credit reports from 16 foreign credit bureaus and it enabled our company expansion into the UK and Singapore. So this is kind of the result that I drove. I was able to help us expand into the UK and Singapore. And I did that by like building out this project from zero to one. So like just that bullet point kind of signifies that like I'm able to own an end to end development cycle because yeah, I kind of like drove this like company expansion to UK and Singapore. What else? So collaborate closely with engineers and data science. Where is that? Like kind of this is instead of saying that I collaborate closely with engineers and data science and things like that. I think just writing enough bullet points to show that you are able to lead projects, you're able to drive results that really shows that you can collaborate with people. Like how can you, how can you, um, lead the development of our com data compliance layer without talking to lawyers on the team? Like when I did this project, I had to talk to the lawyers in our team to figure out how we're supposed to do data compliance for certain regulatory international regulatory bodies. So, um, yeah, that's that, like you should talk about just the results that you drove for the company. And then that should help inform all the other bullet points. That's kind of how I do it. So it's like, I, I, I think like the, the structure for bullet point bullet points is like here. Um, did X, which something like, I, I learned this, I learned this like from a, from, from a Google, from a Google YouTube video when, they, when they're saying how to structure bullet points. Let's talk to GPT quickly. How do I structure bullet points for results? oriented okay yeah so you could see um you just you just talk about so how you do it is um you talk about action what you did and then plus the outcome so follow the structure to ensure every bullet, what you accomplished, brief description of the task project and quantifiable or notable results. So you can see increased code deployment efficiency by 30% by implementing CI CD pipelines, reducing release cycles from two weeks to one week. So that's kind of how I structured it. I would be like, um, give some context essentially. Or let, 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 give me a second. Let me quickly find exactly what that, um, like how to structure it. Give me a second. Is it pause? One. Okay, start it again. So I found it. So basically how I structured each bullet point was like go on this Google. This is even better than, than the one I did. My video here. Um, go, go, go follow this one. I'll link it but it talks about like how you want to structure it based on if you're experienced or a recent grad. It pretty much says what I said there. I really like the advice here. So that's how I structured my resume and it actually worked. Like that's how I landed my jobs. And then it also talks into like, you want to structure your bullet points like this, accomplished X as measured by Y by doing Z. So let's, let's like look exactly at one of these bullet points. So what did I accomplish here? I stabilized 30 plus flaky, failing and flaky end-to-end -end test. So that's what I accomplished as measured. And then like, I, I also do, a, like you also need to measure it. So you see a lot of these ones is like, 
stabilize 30 plus 30 plus and I'm highlighting the actual like quantitative measure by 90% and you could see like here, I think this one is the best example of, of, of doing it. I say, accomplish this. I designed and built our public API from zero to one that can deliver credit reports. That was our, that was what I accomplished. And like the measurement is like 16 different credit bureaus. And the result was that we were able to expand into the UK and Singapore. And you can see, I literally structured all my bullet points like that. So all of them are like accomplished x by um, measure y which resulted in z kind of thing so yeah that's one thing i do i also add lots of links into my stuff so if you look here like i, I add links here so you could literally click on the link like recruiters can quickly hit the link and see all the stuff that i built like if you have projects just link it straight to your project um, like if you have your email, your GitHub, link it just straight there so they don't have to look it up themselves. They can just kind of click it and follow. Links do work. What else? Yeah. One thing I also did is somebody like I was working with a recru recruiter who's analyzing my resume and they're giving me this advice and they work with like quant funds and fan companies and they were just telling me to add the technologies that I was working with like for each bullet point so they can know like it also just helps like okay you did this project you did this project where you designed and built in public api what would the languages use because some of the languages change based on the project you used um so that's kind of what it was here so you could see some of these are in java some of them are in python some of them are in typescript so you could see um this some of it repeats some of what's here, but it's more specific to some of the things you've actually done. So yeah, I add this little section to pretty much all my bullet points, if it makes sense of like what was the database, what was the front end, what was the back end, different things like that. Yeah, and then tr I, I try to bold all my metrics to just highlight, like make it pop out like what I achieved in a quantitative manner. Um, yeah. And then lastly, I write my education and I keep my GPA there just cause, cause sometimes it helps with like fan companies or quant funds. If they, they, they like a good GPA, you don't need to put your GPA there if you don't want to, um, pretty much just put in your GPA there if you're comfortable when you're doing, when I was doing, when I was still a new grad, I would also add some of my classes here, but yeah, that's kind of it. That's kind of how pretty much how I structure my resume. Um, let me know if that helped. Let me know if you need any more advice. You can like take a look at my resume right here. Maybe I'll just zoom out so you can take a picture of it. Or let me zoom out here so you can just like, I'll just pause for a second and just, you can take a, some screenshots of it and read my the different bullet points. But yeah. Pretty much, I just want to say how I structured how I structured it, and then the bullet points like just use GPT to help you build it if you want. You can like just ask it to build you results oriented bullet points like that, and it'll do a pretty good job, honestly. So, how long is this video so far? 18 minutes. Yeah, I hope that helps everyone who's creating your re creating their resumes, and good luck uh, in 2025 or whatever year you're watching this on how to build a resume for computer science. All right, see you in the next video.